Hey guys, it's Colby Evans and you're listening to the podcast Mental Health Capsule. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving. I just wanted to let everyone know I'm so thankful for every single one of you. I'm thankful for the podcast. I'm thankful for the community. I'm thankful for the love and the support of every single one of you. And I hope today you spend some time with your family, your loved ones, you eat some good food. If you're having mac and cheese, you're doing Thanksgiving right. And I just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you're having just an awesome day and you're having a great week and you're ready to have an awesome time listening to today's episode. Now, let's get into it. First off, I've been doing a lot of thinking. And what I've been thinking about is how I want to tell you guys how when I started this journey, the way that I saw this journey going was so different than where it is today. And when I say that, when I started the journey, I started by buying diets. And when I started buying diets, I mean, I just wanted to get on a diet. I was like, if I do a diet, then I'll get better. And let me tell you, I was wrong because every time I did a diet, I was back at square one. Now, the reason I talk about diets is if you do do diets and you do meal planning and you believe in all that stuff, that's great. But I just want to say that it doesn't work for the rest of your life because you can't be on a diet for the rest of your life. You can't not have mac and cheese. You can't not have the good stuff for the rest of your life. And people try to tell me that you couldn't have that stuff for the rest of your life. And I was like, well, then I can't do the diet because I'm going to fail. Everything in moderation. Now, the reason I share this is because when I started, you know, I I saw myself in this image of you're going to you're going to look like the next top model and the way you're going to get there is by doing the diet. And if you don't do the diet, then you'll never look like the next top model. And then I realized, well, if I was supposed to be the next top model, that would just like happen easily for me and it wouldn't be so hard. And then I realized I didn't want to be the next top model. And then I realized I didn't want to be the front cover of Vogue. Well, it would be nice. I mean, hey, Vogue, you want me to be the front cover? I'm down, but like this is this is what it's going to look like, okay? Why can't like unique and different people be the front cover of Vogue too? Anyways, we're going to get serious here. You know, I, I want to go back. When I started my journey, I really wanted to make it right with myself. But I I wasn't there. Like, you know, when I say make it right, I meant like I just wanted to feel like my best self. And I just wanted to feel like Colby. And I didn't know what that felt like because when I think back to – five-year-old me she was like loud she would come into a room and she was like hey what's up and then like you know I'd be doing one thing then the next thing you know I'm somewhere else in the house or we're talking about something and then the next thing I'm talking about Disney World and then I'm talking about what are we eating and then I'm talking about a toy and I was just like Colby I was free-spirited And I would express myself the way I wanted to express myself. And that's what I want to be. I want to express myself the way I want to express myself. So today, I'm going to express myself the way I want to express myself. And today, I want to talk about so many different things. But I want to start by talking about image. Now, image. Funny. Image. Let's have a sip of some liquid death. When I say the word image, I think it scares a lot of people because your image is what you're seen and known as. And when I think of my image, I used to see a lot of darkness and a fat person, 
and someone who just made a lot of mistakes. And I was so tired of that image. Sorry. I was tired. I was tired of the same story. I was tired of being told no. I was tired of giving up. I was tired of seeing 280 pounds on the scale. I was tired of starting something and not finishing it. And I was tired telling myself that I was going to stop and then doing it. See, when I say when I, when I was tired, I was just tired. And I would come home and I'd go to bed and I'd wake up and I'd say, what is my purpose? My purpose has not been fulfilled. And I feel like I just wanted my purpose to like magically happen. Like I'd wake up and then I would be living it. And sadly, it doesn't happen like that because we see it on the internet like it just happens. Like these people wake up and they start living this life and they never did it. No, these people worked their asses off. And some of these people made it because they never gave up. And some of these people were born into it. And you can't take that away from someone because those people, that's, that's their life. Now, when I did my last episode, which we aren't going to get to listen to, I, fin- I ended with this and I'm going to start with it now. Someone in my fiance's family just gave birth and I don't know, I'm 28 years old and like, I want to have kids one day. And I'm like really fascinated on how babies are made. Not like how they're made. I know how they're made. You have sex. Sorry, but it's true. You have sex. But like how they're actually made inside of your body. So last weekend, I don't know. I was like, I really want kids and like, I'm not ready yet, but like one day. So I was like, you know, what do you got to do? Like, how does it work? Like, how does your system, like when, when your period ends, like when can you get pregnant? Like 14 days after, whatever. So I was like, I want to watch a video on it, like the science version of it. So, you know, me started watching the video and I'm like sitting, I'm like, whoa. And it made me realize life. And when I pushed play, it was like the semen is coming out and it's like entering the uterus and it's like all of these little fishies and there's so many of them and they're all going they're like on a mission and only one has a chance of making it and sometimes they don't even make it and I'm like oh my god that's so many lives and when I watched the video Then one of them makes it and it goes in and then it has to like, you know, go all down. It's like going on a roller coaster ride and like the chances of it even like forming are not very high. And when I'm watching this video, I'm like, oh my God, I was one of those fishies and I made it. And then I blossomed and then I came out of my, of my mother. Sorry, but it's true. Come out. And when I watched that video, I was like, wow, to be given that opportunity to be here is pretty powerful. And we don't realize that. We don't realize that it's like one in a million that we were given the life to be here on earth. And when I watched the video, it made me think, We all should just be so happy that we're given this opportunity to live. And it really changed my mindset. And it made me wake up and say, I'm going to live every day as if it's my last. I'm going to live every day with gratitude and just tell myself that, like, I'm lucky to have a bed to sleep on. I'm lucky to have a roof over my head. I'm lucky to have a dog. I'm lucky to be getting married. I'm lucky that I'm here. I'm lucky that I decided to change. And that I'm not going to move through my life and feel bad for myself anymore. Because feeling bad for yourself isn't going to get you anywhere. And for so long, I have felt so bad for myself. And I felt so guilty. And I felt so 
resentful for all of my past actions that might have done me wrong. But those were all lessons. And now those lessons I use as ways to make myself better, stronger, happier, and smarter. And I'm just trying to say that we got to give ourselves a round of applause, okay? We made it out. We got here. We grew. We went to kindergarten. We went to middle school. We went to high school. And maybe some of us didn't decide to continue our education, but we made it and we're still here and we're giving it our best every day. And sometimes our best might just be waking up and putting our feet on the ground and just staying in our house. Our best could be maybe going for a walk once a week. Our best could be maybe eating one healthy meal a week. Our best could be coming to a realization that we have something going on in our life and we want to change it. And like sometimes we think that we're supposed to get all these things figured out right away. And I, I don't think that's the case. Sometimes I think it takes years. Sometimes I think it takes coming back and living another life to actually figure it out. And when I watch that video and I think back to it, I tell myself today, how am I going to make the best of it? How am I going to continue to live and be happy? And understand that this life is so temporary. I sometimes wish I could go back and have a conversation with my 12 year old self and say, hey, you know, school's hard, but you're gonna get through it. And maybe you're gonna do it differently. And maybe you're gonna have to get extra help. And maybe it's not gonna be the best experience ever. But the fact that you're in the classroom and you're taking the courses and you're here is just enough because being enough is just waking up and doing it and getting through it and I just like remember when I was younger I could barely get through school and I think I just had so much going on in my mind and I think there's so many kids and people that are in school today that have so much going on in their minds. And the best gift of being yourself is that you ha you're, you're learning something every day. And I never realized that until I got older, that like school was hard, but going through school and having it be hard for me taught me that I, you know, I have a story that I, that I'm here to help that I'm here to tell people that school can be hard, but you can still get through it. School is hard, and sometimes you might not get to go to the school you want to go to, but you can still go to school. That when someone tells you no, that doesn't mean that you can't do something and that you can. And that you don't have to live on with that story and that belief that you're incapable of doing something. And for a long time in my life, I lived that way. I was like, well, you know what? I'll never be a doctor because I can't take a test. And you know what? I'm taking a test right now. And you know what I said to myself? I can take a test. I can pass a test. I'm changing my mindset. I'm changing my beliefs. Because if we live out the beliefs of when we're told no and we're told we can't do something, we'll live that way for the rest of our life. It's like when I started my podcast, people were like, don't do the podcast. It's not going to work. And I was like, I'm going to do the podcast because I believe that it can work. We can't always listen to what everyone tells us and believe what people say. If you believe in yourself, that is the best place to start. And sometimes believing in ourself takes work. It's not that easy to wake up and just say, hey. I'm going to do this because I believe in it. You know, I think when I started really working on myself, I realized that it wasn't all about the way I looked. I realized that my hair was going to turn gray. I realized that I was going to get wrinkles. 
And I realized that I could go get Botox and I could fix my wrinkles and then I could make them go away, but they'll just come back. But then I realized that there are things that I can fix that could have a long lasting effect on my whole life. And that was fixing the way I felt inside. And when I realized that I could fix the inside and I could fix the darkness and I could fix the wounds and I could move past them, that I was going to be able to fix the way I saw myself going throughout life. And it's crazy. I mean, like to really think about it, it's like, wow, if I could just do that, it'd be easy. I mean, like it takes work. It takes waking up and staying consistent with what you want in your life. For so long, I remember I would just do a diet because I believed that the diet was going to cure all my problems. It was going to cure the way I looked. And it continued to fail me. And some people do diets and they they work for people, but they're short-term fixes. And when I came to this realization and I told myself like, okay, like it's, you can't be on a diet for the rest of your life. You can't wake up every morning telling yourself, oh, I'm going to go weigh myself and, you know, put that number in my brain. Like you're so much more than a number on a scale. You're so much more than wearing the most sexiest outfit. You're so much more like what you are is not what you see. What you are is what you feel. And when I was able to start feeling into my body and feeling that I didn't feel so good about who I was and that I couldn't make people feel good about me or I couldn't make people forgive me or I couldn't make people want me in their lives, but I could make myself want to be here. And I think when we are able to understand that we have the power of changing ourselves, we're able to do anything in life. You know, it's hard when someone tells you no. It's hard when you get rejected from a job that you've dreamed of having your whole life and realizing that you're not living that dream. But that doesn't mean that you can't live that dream. That doesn't mean that you can't do that thing that you love to do. See, if you love something so much, then why haven't you started doing it? And when I realized that and I asked myself those questions, I decided to change my life. When I used to drink alcohol, I used to drink alcohol eat really bad food, go to bed, wake up. I was miserable. I would go to work. And then I'd come home and never do anything and scroll on social media and just realize that I was getting nowhere. And sometimes to have those realizations, it takes actually going inside and saying, hey, you got to change. You can't continue to feel this way because it's getting you nowhere. And I think sometimes we think we hit this age in our life where we're like, well, it's too late. You know, I want to have kids now. I want to settle. No, it's never too late. It's too late when you say it's too late and you continue to do the things that make you feel that way. So first off, if you're listening right now, I want you to just sit down and I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to tell yourself that you can do this and that we're going to do it together. And then I want you to just feel into it. And sometimes feeling into it can bring so many feelings, like feelings that were just like, okay, I'm turning it off. I can't do this. But really just like feel into it. And when you feel into it, you're going to start to feel, okay, well, mm, I do drink a lot. Mm, I really don't like the way I've been treating myself. I really don't like the way that I wake up every morning and 
say, oh, I have to go to work. And when you can like have those realizations, it's a good thing, okay? And I know they're scary and I know they're like, oh my God, stop, don't do this to me. But like keep going through them. And the reason I share this is because I remember when I was drinking a lot and I would have wine, I would like drink and then I would get all emotional and have all these like self-realizations. And I was like, well, I'm just not fixing them. I'm making them worse because I'm still drinking. And like the problem is, is that I'm drinking. So I stopped drinking. And when I stopped drinking, I realized there was a lot of pain and a lot of emotions. And it was really hard because I didn't want to fix these emotions. I just wanted to wake up and feel normal. And Sometimes when we have all these emotions, we just want to numb them and we don't want to have to feel the pain anymore. And it's easier to have a drink than actually talk about how you're feeling. And I realized that when I started talking about the way that I was feeling and I stopped drinking, I realized that like I had to do the work. I had to come to this realization that no one's going to fix me, but I can fix myself. And I remember last Thanksgiving, I was a mess. I went back to my college town and I went to where I went to school and I made this video. And the video that I made was like me telling a story to myself about my past. And when I thought about my past, I was like, wow, like, you know, I want to blame all these situations. But like, I was just drinking all the time. And I was doing drugs and I was smoking and I I just didn't care. And in order to have a good life, you have to care. And in order to live out your purpose and who you are as a person, you have to care. And if you continue not to care and you continue to put yourself in the positions where you have bad things happen to you or you make bad decisions and you make bad mistakes and you hang around the wrong people, you're never going to change. And when I started to change, I realized that a lot of my life was just me feeling bad for myself in the decisions I made. And I realized that when I looked in the mirror, I never felt good about who I was. And I thought that maybe going to therapy and getting put on antidepressants would fix my problems, but they never really did because I was just letting that be a quick fix and that I actually had to do the work myself. And I'm not saying I don't go to therapy because I still go to therapy, but like doing the work yourself is actually doing the work. It's like getting up, feeling good about yourself, telling yourself that you can go to the gym and that you don't have to wear the sexiest gym outfit and that getting there and maybe just walking on the treadmill for five minutes and going home was enough. And maybe, you know, just getting out of bed was enough. And maybe just looking at yourself and telling yourself that you love yourself was enough. And these are just little actions that we can take every day that seem so hard to take. And when I started to take these small little actions, I started to feel little pieces inside come together. When I think of like my internal wound, when I think of the inside of my feeling, it was never the right feeling. And when you don't have the right feeling inside, how can you be you? You can't. You pretend. You lie. You're late. You're not accountable. You're not someone that people want to be around. And that really gave me the answers that I needed. And when I got the answers I needed, I realized I'm going to do this motherfucking thing. I'm going to change my life. And I'm not going to change it for my parents. And I'm not going to change it for my brother. And I'm not going to change it for the people that were in my life 10 years ago just because I want them to see me shine. I'm going to change it because I want to change for myself. Everything that you do in your life is for you. 
when you leave this world, you leave with you. You don't leave with everyone else. And this is kind of dark and deep and scary and emotional, but, you know, some of my darkest moments were when I almost left the world. And, you know, I think back to those moments and I say, what got me there? What got me there was making the wrong decisions. What got me there was continuing to do the wrong things. What got me there was doing drugs when I should have been getting sober. What got me there was probably always saying yes to people and never saying yes to myself. What got me there was choosing to go out instead of taking a night in to work on my, my, myself and healing myself. And I remember last year or two years ago, I decided to take drugs and I almost killed myself because I, I was fed up. And when I think of that moment, I think of why I got sober and why I got sober is because I want to be here. I want to be alive. And sometimes we don't realize that in order to be alive, we have to work on ourselves. So I'm now sitting here and I'm a hundred pounds, you know, less heavier than I was a year ago. And I'm a different person and I feel so different inside. And I actually go to the bathroom with the light on and I actually see myself in the mirror and I feel proud of who I am. But I don't think I could have ever seen who I was if I never went inside. And, you know, no one told me that. No one said, hey, Colby, if you want to change, got to go inside. I always just wanted the outside. I wanted the perfect body. I wanted the perfect outfit. I wanted the perfect home, the perfect job, the perfect car. I just wanted it to all look great. And I was like, if it can look great on the outside, then that's really all that mattered. And over this year, I realized that that's not what matters because the person that you leave with is your soul. And when you leave the world, your soul lives on. So if you want to have this vibrant soul and this vibrant energy, the best gift you can give yourself is healing inside. Now, I know a lot of us are scared to take the first step. I know a lot of us are scared of what that looks like, but it doesn't have to be scary. It can be fun. It can be the change that we all need. So do it. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You know, life's already as hard as it can be. And it's only going to get harder. And when I say it's only going to get harder, I mean we have to make money. We have to have a job. We have to be able to provide. We have to be able to live the life that we want to live. Now, if you want to live the life that you want to live, why not make the best of it? Sorry. Why not make the best of it? So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what it looks like to make the best of it. When I look at my life, I look at what went wrong. And what went wrong was not giving myself the love and the support that I needed to be me. Giving yourself the love and the support that you need to be you is owning up to the fact that maybe you're not okay. Maybe you're not positive. Maybe you're not 
in the job that makes you feel like you. And if that's the case, maybe you should leave your job. Maybe you should find a new job. You know, we we think that we get this job or we get this career, or we get this life and that is it. And if we change it, everything's going to change and we could be making the worst decision. But like, you never know till you try. You never know until you actually step outside of your comfort zone and actually do it and see where it takes you. You know, sometimes you got to fail in order to succeed. I had to fail many times in order to succeed. I had to be told no many times in order to get back up and to tell myself yes. And being told no is actually pretty cool because when people tell you no, it gives you even more power to want to keep going. And that's where I've kind of changed my mindset is that I haven't let the no's and the people and the and the hardships and the horrible times stop me from continuing in my journey. I think that the first step I took was finding God. You know, I've always had this really weird relationship with God because I feel like there's been so many times where I've done just, I've done so many wrong things and that like now my time here is like to just like make up for it and it's so much pressure but like I had to get out of that mindset and now that I've been able to like be like hey like you made mistakes but like you can still be here and be proud of yourself and be happy that you decided to change your life And I think so many of us, we're just scared. Like, we're scared to change our lives. We're scared to do a podcast. We're scared to play the guitar. We're scared to start painting. We're scared to invite a friend out that we might have never hung out with before. We're scared to pick up the phone and call someone. We're scared to post a video on social media because someone might see it and make fun of us and send it to someone. We're scared that we didn't lose enough weight so we can't wear this dress or we can't go to this party because so-and-so is going to be there and all these different little things. And you cannot live your life that way. You got to live your life for yourself. You know, like things happen when you step out of your comfort zone. And the biggest step I've taken is stepping out of my comfort zone. Look, I used to drink all the time. I used to smoke pot. I used to snort drugs. I was just not okay. And the way that I fixed myself was by not doing those things anymore. And that's taken work and that's taken time. But the way that I did that was not just by waking up one day and saying, hey, I'm going to stop doing all these things and everything's going to be great because it doesn't work like that. And like, even today, I still struggle with like loving myself every day, but like, I find it deep within myself and I say, well, You got to love yourself if you want to be here. And when you love yourself, things are going to come to you that you have always wanted to come to you in your life. And as I've gotten older, I've started to forgive myself for many of the mistakes I've made. And I've forgiven myself for being that person that had to go to school and felt like she could never be smart. And I've forgiven myself for telling myself that I could never take a test when I can actually take a test. And I've forgiven myself for maybe, you know, ending up in the wrong place or making the wrong decision or having a conversation or making a fool of myself. But if we never forgive ourselves, we'll never move forward. And in my life right now, it's been kind of hard because there hasn't been a lot of people. But the one thing that I've realized about myself is that I've been able to grow. And growing started by going in. And when I went in, I realized that like my breathing was off. I was always like, or I was like, why today? And I think when you can change your breath and you can change the way you speak and you can change the way you feel inside and you can answer the reasons like 
I don't like myself in this outfit. And you can say, I like myself in this outfit. I like myself with no makeup. I like myself with no alcohol. And you can feel into it. You can just like be you. And I think the more and more that this world is here, we have to start to realize that we don't need something to make us be us. We don't need drugs and alcohol in order to be here. We don't need a sip of a drink in order to have a conversation. We don't need a blunt in order to go to bed. We just need to be okay with ourselves inside. And I really feel that I had to learn that to be able to share this. And when I was 100 pounds heavier, I, I just never really felt anything. It was so hard because, like, sometimes I would hear people say, like, hey, like, I like being big. I, I don't, I'm fine. It's okay. And, you know, it, it's always been so discouraging to me because I was never fine when I was overweight. Like, I just didn't want to talk about it with people or I didn't want to be like, hey, like, yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm good. Like, I, I like, I like that my body's this big and I'm fine with it. And I want to be like this for the rest of my life. No, it wasn't like that. It was like more internal and it was really hard to wake wake up. But like sometimes waking up can be really scary and it can be those moments where we're like, oh my God, why is this happening to me? I just, I, I just don't, I, I, I don't want to have to even think about this. And when I was able to like, experience those moments and realize that those moments have made me Colby, that those moments have made me continue to live, and that those moments have taught me lessons, I was like, okay, we're going to do this thing. So if you're going through a really hard time in your life right now, and you don't like your job and you don't like yourself and you don't like what you're doing and you don't like the thoughts that go on your brain, like you're not doing the work. You got to do the work. And going to therapy and thinking that your therapist is going to fix you, they're not. You're going to fix yourself. And it sounds crazy, but no one's going to tell you that. You have to tell yourself that. And that's why I made this episode today was because when I was starting my journey, I was like, okay, I'm going to hire this person because they're going to help me with this. And I'm going to hire this person because they're going to help me with this. And then like, I would leave and I was like, well, like they gave me some advice, but they didn't fix it. And you're the one who has to fix it. You're the one who has to say, Hey, I'm going to stop drinking. Hey, I'm actually going to spend the weekend in and I'm just going to relax and I'm not going to go to a party and I'm going to, you know, do the things that I love to do. And we don't realize that our life's going by so fast and that we forget to do these things. And then at the next time you're not feeling good, you're like, why do I feel this way? Well, maybe it's because you never really gave yourself the time that you needed to be with yourself. I think spending time alone has taught me more about healing than I've ever learned about healing from anyone else. And my wound was so big, you know, like there were nights when I couldn't sleep. There were nights when I was like, oh my God, I think I just, this is it. Like, I got to go. Like, I got to go get the help that I need. I just like, and I just kept praying and I kept saying, you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. You're going to get over it. And it wasn't until recently I was like, I'm so over having fear. I'm so over fearing my life. I'm so over thinking that I can't do this or that I'm not capable or that I can't go to bed or that I can't feel comfortable in my own home. 
And I realized that I was living with the fears of my past. And that had to end. And the way that I ended that was telling myself, are they still happening? Are they still going on? Is it actually happening in that exact moment? And the answer was no. The answer was no. The answer was, was that that happened in your past and you just haven't healed inside yet. And we're so focused on the outside image. We never focus in on the inside image. And when you go inside and you realize that you actually went through some pretty hard times in your life and that you had some pretty intense experiences and that you feel a certain way and that you've never voiced it and that you've never spoken about it, no wonder you don't feel good. No wonder you might look really good but feel like you're the worst person in the world because you never did the work. And doing the work is hard. And a lot of people don't want to do the work. A lot of people would rather live the rest of their life just feeling the way they feel. Then why are you here? Why are you here? Why, why are you continuing to do that to yourself? And when I had these conversations with myself, I said, I need to tell people this. Like, I need to, we need to talk about this. Because so many people told me that it's going to get better, that I was going to be okay, that I was just going through something. And sometimes I would say, these people must be going through something too, but they just don't want to talk about it. Because at the end of the day, who really wants to talk about their mental health? Who really wants to talk about what's going on in their life? It's so much easier to talk about sports, football, what you do for a living, where you're going on vacation, what so-and-so is doing, who this person's dating. But that's not working on yourself. And see, when you work on yourself, you heal yourself. And when you heal yourself, you can see yourself. And when you can see yourself, nothing's going to stop you. And when no one can stop you, you're living your purpose. And when you're living your purpose, you feel like your best self. And I think that it took me years to figure this out. Because I care about people. And I've always wanted to make things right. But I think the best thing that you can make right in your life is making it right with yourself. And when you're right with yourself, everything else comes. And sometimes these are lessons that we don't learn until we're 50 years old. And somehow, God allowed me to figure this out at 28. And God said, hey, Colby, you're going you're gonna to do this and you're going to talk about it. And I'm here talking about it because I see the pain in people. I feel the pain when I'm around people. And I know that a lot of these people don't want to talk about it because it's a scary thing to want to talk about. And sometimes people just want to tell you to shut up. Can we not talk about that today? It's not a good day. And I think that a lot of these people need to work on themselves. So if you're listening to this and you're going through it, you can do it. You just haven't sat with it. You haven't felt into it. You're just waiting for that like perfect moment for it to come to you, but it's not going to. You have to go to it. You have to pull into it. And you have to realize that even if you lose the weight, even if you look the best, that doesn't mean that you are the best. 
feeling like you're the best is a feeling that you have when you were a little kid. You know when you're like a little kid and you realize that you can go to Disney World for the first time and you walk into that amusement park and you're like, oh my God, there's Mickey Mouse. I've never met Mickey Mouse before. Like that to me was like feeling good. Like I was like a kid. I was excited. I was going to Disney World and I didn't have like a worry and I didn't have a worry in the world. And I was a kid because I didn't have all of these things going on in my life. I wasn't worried about paying bills. I wasn't worried about providing for myself. I wasn't worried about how I was going to keep a roof over my head. I wasn't worried about all of these things. And then as we got older, our life started to change and we had more and more and more and more moments and experiences happen in our life that can alter your brain and the way that you think, the way that you go about doing life. And to feel good is something that we all deserve to feel. And feeling good isn't something that has to be temporary. And feeling happy isn't something that has to be temporary. And I think I learned all of this when I fully got sober. And when I fully got sober, I realized that so many people like to drink, but so many people don't like to work on themselves because drinking is easier than working on yourself. And as I've gotten older, I just have said to myself, you know, there's one story I can share. It's the one I'm sharing right now. And it might not make sense to you in this exact moment but it will make sense to you when you decide to feel into it. See, your life is already short and your life is already temporary. And if you have a dream, then why aren't you living it? And if you have a purpose, why aren't you giving it? And if you think about it all day, Why are you doing that to yourself? And I think when I was able to ask myself those questions, it made me realize that I could change my life. And changing your life isn't something that we all want to do because being comfortable is easier. Being comfortable is more reassuring and it's an easier way to go about living life. But I just, I think that a hundred pounds on my body that, oh my God, let me make sense. One second here. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm getting all philosophical in here. I sometimes think I'm a philosopher. (laughs) I'm kidding. But actually, I like philosophy. Okay. I feel like I've been talking for so long now, so I just need a minute, Chris, to just... I'm 28. And I'm getting married this year. And it's a big deal. And I've heard so many people say to me throughout my life that Life's short, and it is. I think I realized that when my grandparents died. I think I realized that when the people that I had in my life 
aren't in my life anymore. I think I realized that when I saw someone when I was 20 years old and then I saw them 10 years later. And I said, wow, time really flies by. What I'm trying to get at is, is that you can spend your whole life trying to be perfect. You can spend your whole life trying to fix every little thing about you. But you can spend your whole life living a false reality and never fixing your internal pain. And for me, the best gift I ever gave myself was fixing my pain. And pain is real. And pain is hard. And pain is scary. And pain is fear. But you, you deserve to live. And you don't have to live with the pain. And you don't have to live with the fear. And I think the best way that I was able to figure all of this out was when I decided to say, hey, I'm done. I'm done living in the past. I'm done carrying every scenario that ever tore me apart with me into my future. I'm done telling myself that I'm not capable of doing the things that I want to do. And I think when you can tell yourself that you're done and you can work on yourself and you can do the work, you're going to feel your best self. For me, when I healed inside and I realized that there was trauma, there was pain, there was addiction, there was drinking, there was all of these little things that a lot of people, that a lot of us don't want to deal with, and I actually dealt with them, I realized that I didn't have to have pain anymore. I realized that I didn't have to have fear. I realized that I didn't have to be unhappy. I realized that I could wake up in the morning and feel excited about life. And I think that we're so caught up in money and status in looking the best and having the best that we forget to do the work on the inside. And the inside is what's going to help you be the best version of you. And now living this way of life has taught me that we all can do it. We all can heal our inner wound. We all can heal the inside so we can be good on the outside. And then when you're looking in the mirror, you're not going to have to question who you are. You're not going to have to question the outfit that you have on your body. You're not going to have to question if you're good enough to walk in that room. If you're good enough to have that conversation with that person you've been wanting to have a conversation with, you're just going to do it. And when you're able to just do it, you're living your life. And that is what I learned. That is what I learned. I learned that the image on the outside is never as good as we think it is. It's really your soul. So let your soul shine. Let your soul be you. Let your soul connect back to your inner self, to your inner child. And remember that every little mistake you ever made isn't going to make who you are for the rest of your life. Because those mistakes were lessons and gifts that were given to you from God. And they were there to teach you a lesson so that you can be the version that you are becoming today. And when I realized all of these things, my life started to change. My body started to change. My vision started to change. My hobbies started to change. My way of life started to change. I stopped thinking about things that didn't matter. I stopped thinking that I had to be at a bar every night. I stopped thinking that I had to be invited to every party or that if I wasn't invited to something that I was missing out. And then my mind got clear. And when you have a clear vision, everything else comes to you. And I think that we spend so much time trying to make everything so perfect that imperfection 
is beauty. Imperfection shows people that you're willing to fail and you're still willing to keep going because no one in this world is perfect. No one has it perfect. Everyone's going through something. And I just want people to know that my wound is still healing and I'm still doing the work inside and I'm still feeling into it and I'm still finding answers. And the biggest step I made this year was deciding that I wasn't going to smoke pot anymore, that I was going to clear my mind, that I was going to clear my brain. I stopped drinking and then I started smoking weed again because I wanted to numb the pain. But when I realized that I actually wanted to be 100% sober and I wanted to live this life with a clear mind and I wanted to feel into it and I wanted to understand everything that was going on inside and I wanted to give myself the answers that I have been searching for my whole entire life, I realized that they were all inside of me and that I had the keys to fixing this that I didn't need someone to drive me there to fix it for me. And that is honestly how you heal your inside image first. Because your image on the outside will change for the rest of your life. And you won't be 20 forever. And you won't be 28 forever. And you won't be 30 forever. And one day you will be 80. And one day you won't be here anymore. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Don't wait for the image on the outside to change. Change the image on the inside. And when you have that image that you like to see, that you like to feel, you'll continue to live this life the way you were meant to be here, the way you were meant to live your purpose the way you were meant to wake up in the morning. And you will go about your day and you will feel good about it. And you will come home and you'll have a nice meal and you'll go to bed with a good intention. And fear won't be stopping you from doing the things that you love to do. And that's truly what I've learned in this past year and four months. And I. I'm sitting here right now recording this episode for the second time and I'm looking at myself in the camera and I'm saying this and I'm amazed that this is the truth. One year ago, I was at the bottom and now I'm like halfway at the top of the mountain and it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I have all the people in my life that I've wanted to have in my life. And I've had people in my life that have stayed with me through this journey. And I have new people coming into my life. And the best thing I've ever learned is to forgive. And to realize that we all go through obstacles. We all go through pain. We all go through battles. But the best battle you can ever fight is to live out your life the right way. So thank you so much for listening today. As deep as and philosophical as this episode has been, it's been, you know, a whirlwind because I did have to re-record the episode and I'm a little bit tired. But I just want you all to know I care about you. And if you're listening, I just want you to know that if I can do it, you can do it. And even if you're 50 years old and you feel like it's too late, it's not. Because you could have another 20 years of your life left. And maybe the outside image isn't the way you want it to look, but it's okay because we all get older, but you can still get right with the person inside. And honestly, that's all you need in life is to feel good inside. It's the best gift you can give yourself. So anyways, 
So my name's Colby, and I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but my Instagram page is called Navigate Your Wellness, and my partner, Michael Long, is actually a part of this new mission with me, and our mission is to help people heal their image on the inside first and to realize that it all starts by the inside first. And when you heal the inside first, the outside image will come. And that image will change. But just knowing that you have that image inside that feels right and feels connected to you, it's pretty much all you need to live out your life. And there's so many ways to go about living this journey and healing that image inside and finding the right image and finding what you want it to look like. But the first step you can take is speaking out about it to yourself and just having the conversation and understanding that it's not going to happen overnight. But I just want people to know that I get life. I get how it works. And you, you got to make the best of it. Just make the best of it. So happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving. I know this episode was a lot and I probably said the same word like multiple times, but who cares? Because we all make mistakes. We all mess up. Sometimes things are not perfect. And I'm here to show you that imperfection is beauty and I'm here for it. So I'm your host, Colby Evans. And Starting next week, there's going to be two hosts. It's going to be me and Michael. And sometimes it's just going to be Michael. And sometimes it's just going to be me. But we're we're here for it. So, guys, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the saying. I'm gonna give you the saying. Here we go. Here we go. Changing your body image from the inside first. Have a great Thanksgiving and thank you again for being here. And don't hesitate to reach out because I'm always here for you. Ta-ta!